So you've submitted your offer, you just received a counter from the seller and it says that they want you to remove your appraisal contingency. Should you? What's going on everybody? My name's Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group and today we're talking about contingencies, specifically about the appraisal contingency. Uh, I've seen on Reddit, I've seen on uh, the comments on these videos, I've seen all over the internet people talking about how hot the seller's market is, how I have to remove contingencies to be competitive, and all of that sort of thing. My opinion here is that uh, people are not looking at this the right way. They're thinking I have to do something in order to be competitive. To me, that's backwards. And I wanna talk about this and how you can strategically talk about removing contingencies, do so responsibly, and put yourself in a stronger position to succeed when you're actually making those offers. So let's get into this thing. First and foremost, what is a contingency? I've done a video on this last year. I'll link to it up here about what they are what, um, and all of that. But in a nutshell, they're your escape valve. They're your legitimate way out of the contract should something happen or something not happen. Uh, in the case of the appraisal contingency, whenever you get a loan, uh, the bank is gonna make you pay for an appraiser. That appraiser is gonna go out and give an independent opinion of value. They get your contract. They know what you're paying for the house. Their job is to try and support that value using um, the size of the house, they, they measure it, they look at the upgrades, uh, and then they go pull similar houses that have sold recently and try and justify the price per square foot and all the different adjustments that need to be made. If they can't and they come in with a low appraisal, um, that is what your appraisal contingency is for. Saying simply, um, we're gonna hold uh, our escape valve uh, on our side of the table until we get a satisfactory appraisal. Until the bank independently verifies that what we're paying uh, for this house is a fair value for um, relative to what the comps say, what the market says. Now, with prices pushing up as high as they are, it's really scary to wanna to do that because a lot of the times when you're writing offers, you're having to leapfrog the last comp and you're going a little higher, a little higher, a little higher, and no one wants to be the person left out uh, in the cold when it comes to that low appraisal and be the first person um, to not get the appraisal. Because admittedly, most houses are appraising right now. I have not seen too many um, that are coming in low. And if they are coming in low, they're not coming in drastically low. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. But that's what the appraisal contingency is. It's your legitimate way to get out of the contract or negotiate for something meaning a lower price typically uh, if the appraisal comes in low. However, sellers don't like these because that doesn't they don't have a sure deal. They're not guaranteed to get the money that you offered them in the first place, right? It's all very loose. It's all very tumultuous. It's there's no guarantees, right? So they don't want that. And because they have all the power or most of the power in this market, they can demand it. Now, you as a buyer, what are your options? Well, there's two sides to this appraisal conversation that I think are really really important. Number 1, is obviously the market. What are the comps? How does this house stack up relative to other houses that have sold? Is it better? Is it finished up? Does it have a better floor plan? Is it on a better street? Um, were the other ones on busy streets, etc., etc.? What was the price per square foot average for that neighborhood and how much are you paying over or under that, right? So you can make that determination with your agent and decide, uh, are we paying a super premium? And is this really pushing the boundary for the neighborhood? Are we setting a price record in some capacity in this neighborhood? Uh, is there a pending sale uh, that maybe is gonna close before hours um, that we could potentially use? Um, those are the sorts of things you need to find out. And simply, that is actually a really uh, important point, pro tip, if you see a bunch of pending sales around your house, make sure you uh, you or your agent call someone on the, uh, what, in that transaction and find out what the price it's gonna close for and when, so that you can know if you can use it as a comp or not. Because if you know that, you can more confidently bid that the neighborhood is going in a certain direction and you can make an offer based on those comps as opposed to the older ones um, that the other lazier people are not gonna know about necessarily. All right, so good pro tip there. But generally you've got that market side, right? The other side of this is your cash position as a buyer. How, what your cash is on hand, what your assets are, how much you have a, available uh, to uh, complete this transaction from a cash perspective. What does that mean specifically? Well, 
let's just use round numbers for a million bucks, right? You're gonna put 20% down, so that's 200,000. You obviously have some other closing costs and you have um, in a jumbo scenario, a jumbo loan scenario, you have a reserve requirement as well. Talk to your lender about what that means, um, but just know it's not just the 20%. But um, let's just say the appraisal comes in at 950,000, 50 grand low. So now your uh, bank is gonna say, okay, the, the fair market value we believe for this house is 950. So we'll give you the 20% down on the 950, which uh, is great if you have a, an appraisal contingency because you could probably go negotiate something out with the seller and get yourself down or split the difference or whatever. But if you don't, you're now on the hook to make up that difference back up to that million dollars of the of the contract price right and if you're somebody who has only 20 percent down plus maybe just a little bit for the closing costs and you have no ability to liquidate something or borrow some money or whatever your deposit is at risk the seller could go after your earnest money and try and take it for themselves that sucks you don't want that so uh, what you need to do strategically is, is look very seriously at the comps. What is the appraiser gonna see? What's the price per square foot they're probably gonna apply? Is there a part of this house that has a lower ceiling or maybe wasn't done with a permit and it looks really obvious and then the appraiser is probably gonna give us a, a lesser value per square foot? Um, or simply are we just paying an awful lot to get into this house? Um, so you look at where you think that's gonna go and then you look at your cash. What's the worst case scenario we could come up with um, that if it came in low, we would have to bring up the difference. And if you're comfortable making that up and you have the financial ability to do it, you might be a good candidate to safely and responsibly remove your appraisal contingency. If that is going to put you into a position where you're totally uh, house rich but cash poor and you have absolutely no rainy day funds or nothing, um, even and, and then you may not even may, be able to make up much of a shortfall, it is probably not responsible to remove that contingency. All right. So it's, it's a strategic decision with you and your agent that you need to make uh, right at the time you're writing the offer. It really helps you to know your financial ability uh, and the ability of the market to sustain what you're asking or what you're offering um, and then come to a logical conclusion together. Now, just to point out, I did mention that uh, most houses are appraising. I have seen a handful that have come in somewhere between 20 to maybe $50,000 short. That's a lot of money, especially when you're already putting down 200 grand or more in most cases. So um, you really wanna take that very seriously and look at the numbers. If you know that you're paying a premium, do yourself a favor, run the numbers a few different ways, look at it as many times as you have to, and get really sober on the fact that you might have to bring some extra cash to the table to finish this deal off. That doesn't necessarily mean you made a bad purchase. That just means that you really love the house and it's gonna be worth that much to you uh, personally. So do that soul searching, do the numbers, look at it very seriously, and then know the risk, know the downside. Because if you name it and claim it, a lot of the times it loses its power and you can really make a good, strong decision and put yourself in a more confident and potentially more advantageous place when it comes to writing offers. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that makes some sense. And uh, I am going to be doing a couple other videos on the other contingencies. I'll link to them once they're ready. Um, but hopefully you got some value out of that. And if you did, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to continue to put out weekly content just like this and you're not going to want to miss it. So. Without any further ado, let's get on out of here. This is Hans with the Gunderman Group signing off for now. See you guys on the next one.